All right, we have some shipping to do, and it's a lot of beautiful breakable things. So let's get to it. I'll show you how it's done. Let's go. was a good weekend of sales. Um, so let me show you what sold as I go about shipping it. Got my little list here. I am going to start with the easiest things to get off the table, uh, which is probably going to be this little Tommy Hilfiger skirt that I got at the bins. Oop, there goes my paper. Uh, and this, I finally just went ahead and Took an offer of nine bucks on it. Get it out the door. I've had a lot of watchers, no action. It's time for it to move. Super easy to ship. It's just going to go in a little poly bag and we will be done with it. All right, that easy. I do love shipping clothes. I gotta say, don't love listing them. I love shipping them. All right, so that's done. Then I've got this little, um, this is, it is amethyst. I've got this vintage amethyst uh, tie pin. I'm gonna take it off of this little card I kept it on. Let's see if I can show you. Um, see the back? I don't know if you can see the closure on this. There's like no little clasp. It just kind of loops around there. This is a pretty old piece. Uh, I did sell it for 20 bucks. I let it go for 20 bucks. Somebody's probably getting a stinking good deal on that, but that's okay. I made my profit. Now I don't need this huge piece of bubble wrap relatively speaking. So I'm going to score it with my knife and tear it apart, make my own little perforation. And then we are going to wrap it in there. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it like real tight to it. I'm going to leave it in kind of a rectangle so that the buyer can easily identify where it's at and not throw it away because it is small. And then we're going to put it in a bubble mailer and it's going to go first class and that one boop, is on its way let's see what's the next easiest probably the horses these are dala horses not not Dala make you holla, but Dala, D-A-L-A. -A. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see the label on one. They are from Sweden and they are pretty popular. I put the lot of three together because one of them has a little damage. Oh, this one. Yeah, this one actually has damage on its ear. Uh, so I put the three of them in an auction, started them at $9.99, and watched them fly up to $27. So that was fun. And I think I will use my little piece of bubble wrap I have over here. No, I won't. Because it's not big enough. I'll get another one. So we'll start with the biggest horse. Put him in first. Or her. We're going to put them all in the same piece of bubble wrap, like so. Boom, boom, boom. I do this because what I don't want to happen is to package them separately and then have the buyer end up throwing one of them away and saying they didn't get it. 
So even if I were to put these in separate pieces of bubble wrap, I still would have put them all together. Now, that I believe will go in one of my little Nemesis boxes. It's called that because it took me the longest time to figure out how to actually make these boxes and not lose my sanity. They're a little tricky until your brain gets it. Now once your brain gets it, you'll have it. So I'm hoping they fit in there just right, which they do. These are going to go first class, so not much chance of getting pounded around and anything landing on them. And these boxes are actually quite sturdy. They're like a solid cube. So, the horses are on their way. Right on. Horsey's horse. All right. I was very happy with that price. It's exactly what I wanted to happen. All right. See, we're already three down. I think what I will do next is my little woolly mammoth I sold in my plush store. Now with these, I just got to make sure I'm taking off the wholesale price tag. So that's not good. When your customers see what you paid for the item, they don't always understand that you have to mark things up in retail to make money. So we just took that off. He'll go to a safe little home. Uh, I got nine bucks for Woolly Mammoth. Nine dollars. I got a whole bunch of these brand new stuffed animals. They're not vintage. They're not, you know, anything collectible. Um, people are strictly buying these for their cuteness. And I will put him in some tissue paper just, just because. I don't normally for a $9 item, but he's brand new, and just want to give that little extra oomph, shall we say. All right. All right, Billy Mammoth is on his way. Okay, now that leaves me breakables. So now I gotta choose the lesser of the difficulty. <laughs> I think I'll go with this little guy. So interesting story. I've told you guys about Cherish before. C-H-A-I-R-I-S-H. It's where I put my nicer items. Um, items that more are like a home decor or high-end collector. I had this on eBay for uh, $59.99 or $69.99, $69.99. I put it on Cherish for $99.99. And you can, you can set up your reserve, like how low people can make an offer, because they can do that over there too. Somebody paid $92 for this, $92. So I'm pretty happy about that. Cherish does take a 20% commission. That's why I do up the prices over on Cherish. And I'm using some foam on this one, which has a little bit more cushion to it. And again, they're going to get the eBay tape. I try not to do the eBay tape uh, with Cherish, but... I don't have my clear tape out here. How would you get my clear tape out here? Um, probably will do clear tape on the outside box for the Cherish item in this case. I am going to do bubble wrap over that as well. And the thing that I don't like about Cherish is this will have to go UPS. So I do, that's the other reason I price a little higher is because I do have to go do a UPS drop-off. It's, it's just the name of the game with Cherish. Um, what, what box 
actually might not have put this in. All right, I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to have to go find a box for it. So we'll just set you over there. Uh, let's see. Let's do a piece of Murano glass. This piece is a Barovier Toso. Um, you can see the really intricate aventurine silver in there. You can see the, the, the polished flat pontal. See that? Most Murano is not signed. It would have had a label. Um, no label on this. This was bought for 60 bucks. I took a, a $59.99 best offer on this piece. So now I'm a little concerned because this buyer waited until the day before their unpaid item case was going to, uh, what do you call it, where I would be able to, you know, close it and collect my final value fee back and they paid. So sometimes those buyers can end up being your remorse buyers because they're buying something maybe they really couldn't afford, especially in the times that we are having right now. So, um, Always, always a cause for a little bit more concern than if somebody had paid immediately. But we'll see. Oh, oh, and after all that, too, this is one of those ones who uh, messaged me instructions on how to package it, and telling me to use large bubble, which I don't have, and yada -dee, yada -dee. Okay. Gotta love it, right? I actually don't mind... I don't mind customers giving me those messages if they've paid promptly. But don't make me wait three days for payment and then do that. Okay, just saying, my little rant. And they're probably not going to like it. I'm going to put it in on number four, but you know what? It is what it is. There's really no reason to put this in anything. I mean, I really wish I had one of my 8x8x8s, which would be perfect. Oh, this is a little squishy. It's a little squishy. It's a little squishy. What I might do here, let me think. This is what happens when you run out of the correct boxes. I have got to place an order. Um... I'm thinking maybe I'm going to double box just to keep this customer off my back. But I can double box with the priority materials. And this one doesn't add very much weight at all. It's just going to add packing materials. But again, it is what it is. So we're going to stuff this in this box and then we're going to put this box in another box. by 10 by 8 so it's it's actually a little smaller it's probably about the same dimensions actually as the um the number seven but this is going to fit in here really nicely let me just get some packing materials I'm out of packing peanuts, or you would see me using packing peanuts around this. I've got to get packing peanuts.
somebody else's name on there. This was a box I had almost used previously. It's a good size box. I may have to order some of these. So the reason I went a little above board for this particular buyer is I am trying to, they may be opening this already with a perception of wanting to return it in a, I'm giving them a perception of its value is what I'm doing. Like you've got a valuable piece. Don't let go of it. You want it. You really want it. So sometimes we have to play some psychological games. All right, oh, these are all gonna be about the same. So this piece, I, I got a fun story with this piece. This is summer so, what's called when those two colors are like one within another. I don't know if you can see that coming through. Um, this actually has the original label saying that it is a Seguso piece and it has the label from the original store it was purchased from here in Las Vegas many moons ago. Uh, it is like a bud vase. You can see the opening there. Um, I listed this piece for $189.99. And uh, that was, I couldn't find one exactly like it, but I found similar selling in that price range and sometimes a little higher. So I didn't want to be at the highest end of it. So $189.99, literally within an hour of listing this, I got my first offer of $130. Now that was mighty tempting, but I thought, no, I'm going to sleep on it. And I woke up to another offer of 150 from a different seller. And both of those sellers had glass in their IDs. So I was like, okay, they know something about this piece. I'm still, I'm going to sit on it a little bit. I was probably going to accept the 150 and I waited just a little longer and ka -ching! I got full price from someone else. So there you go. I'm not in a hurry to lower the price on something that I have just listed. So that's what caused me to hold off, wait, see what happened, and it paid off. As you can imagine, I am going to be wrapping this one really, really well. always makes me nervous when I sell something in this price range until it gets to its home. So, we're going to coon this little baby up really, really good. I'm going to go ahead and fold these sides in. Uh, the colors on this piece are such spectacular ugh, quality. They're going to be really happy. They're going to be really happy. I think this is probably, you know, more of a rare piece, especially since it has its label. So, we're going to take our time and make sure this baby is packaged very safely. And it's heavy. This is, this is about a four pound piece too. Get where it's going to. Um, I may. I don't know if I'll do FedEx on this or not. We'll, we'll have to see what the pricing comes out to. I made a really long piece of bubble. That's what's kind of fighting with me a little bit as I got to keep it. Keep it in order. Feel good about that. It is gonna make it. That's probably a little, it's a little overkill on the bubble wrap, but we're talking a $190 piece of glass. And I'm still not happy with these edges kind of showing. So I'm gonna tape that 
over more. Same thing on this end. Okay. Yeah, I probably should have gone both ways with it. Hindsight, it's safe. And we're going to put that in a number seven. Actually, I'm going to maybe do the same thing I did on that last one and double box it. If it'll fit nicely in this, we're going to double box, and I think it will. Yeah. It goes down in there quite nicely. I might even have to look and see if this is going FedEx before I seal up the box on this one. Unless I use a plain box. If I use a plain box, then I'm good, because then it can go either way. All right, here's our first layer. Now, there are sellers that would just ship it this way. You know how I know that? I buy glass. <laughs> should see some of the packages I get. Oh, my goodness. Gives me heart attacks. All right. I found a perfect little box. For this perfect little box to set down in. Boom, diddy, boom. all around. Okay, double boxed, ready to fall from a two-story building. Let's hope not. All right. Woo. Done. Now, this isn't really that breakable. This, this is a Japanese teapot. The term is tetsuban. You can see it's got its little strainer, all that good stuff. This one's really neat. It's like this purple gold. Um, they are cast iron, very heavy, very popular. This one sold for 50 bucks, 50 bucks. And that was on an offer to watchers. I had it listed, I think it's $79.99. Let's wrap it up. Not really anything to break on it. But you never want to just, you know, throw something in the package like this without giving the appearance of care. That's what it is. Fire perception is a big thing. And this probably will fit in here. And I'm not too worried about it being a tight fit because it's cast iron. Now, before y'all start messaging and telling me, but cast iron can break. Yes, it can. But it takes a lot to break cast iron. So I'm not too worried about it. I'll take the risk. Okay. Teapot. Better put which teapot because I have another teapot. I actually have two more teapots. So let's do this one. This is Majolica. Um, that had a mark at one point. Don't know who done it. I I did this based on the colors and the glaze and the similar pattern. Um, it's a really nice piece, and we will bubble wrap this really well because it's sold for. $55. This is how you grow your business um, 
without doing twice as much work is you start selling things with higher profits. Um, I did a video on your ASP, knowing your ASP, how to grow your business. Um, if you want to go take a peek at that, I break down the numbers and, and how to figure that all out. Because I know personally I can't do any more work than I'm doing. I am, boom, I'm at the end of my rope. Uh, so the only way to increase my revenue is to increase my profits. And I'm trying to remember which way I went with that. Did I go that way? Yeah, I did. So I'm just going the other way so we have the extra padding both ways. All right, I feel good about that. That will fit in a number seven. I happen to have one piece of this big bubble that I think I'm going to use for this teapot. I'm gonna make sure the handle and the spout are not facing down, that they are side to side so they get that extra cushioning. Okay, now we're gonna fill that up. Just a little more so that we're pushing that down. Yeah, that's better. All right, there's some resistance. Just gotta really kind of push it down. groovy. <gasps> Ooh, I just noticed it's got a big boo-boo. So I am going to go ahead and package this up, but I am also going to reach out and let the buyer know I spotted a boo-boo. Or actually, I'm going to go back and look at my listing and see if I actually noted the boo-boo. So that's what we're going to do. But that's a bummer. Because this is a very groovy set, as you can see, with the speckles. It's a it's a homemade KG. Whoever KG was, they did this groovy glazed teapot. But we will go ahead and act as if it's gonna fly out the door. Just because I'm here. I'm packing. I don't want to come back out and do it again. It's always a bummer, though, to find damage on something after you've sold it. This is, for me, one of the hazards of having somebody else do listings. Because the stuff gets missed all the time. I'm going to see if I can put all these cups into the same piece of bubble wrap, like so. I like how this is working. I do indeed. Whoa, did I like judge that amount of bubble wrap? Whew. Just right. into a number seven.
Oh, did I mention I sold this for 30 $29.99. So I definitely want to check with the buyer on this. Now, you know I'm not a big fan of using paper, but that's loud. In this case, I'm almost out of bubble wrap. Well, I'm not almost out of bubble wrap, but I'm using way too much bubble wrap for packing. And um, I'm not even sure if this piece is going to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with this. Because I've got plenty of room to pack it in here really, really tight. I've also got this piece of like styrofoam and stuff. And I have so much of this paper laying around. That's the other problem. So, gotta clean this up. I'm just gonna make sure it's really tight. And it is. And it is. Boom. Boom. Okay. All right. I've just got to now go back. Clear tape. That's what I needed for this. Clear tape. Let me find a box so at least that part is done. That box is a little overkill, but I am going to also double box because you can see it fits in this box really nicely. And we're going to just snug it into this box first. I'm going to try to get this label off of here. I hate the appearance of these old used labels. I think that's as good as we're going to get. All right. Well, it's better than it was. So I have to go get some clear tape. Okay. Got some clear tape. I guess I ordered some clear tape off Amazon, and now I'm thinking that it's probably sitting in my living room in one of my unopened boxes. How stupid is that? Sometimes there's just not enough hours in the day. And things like that get put to the wayside. So now this box is going to fit inside this box. I still think I'm going to look for a little bit smaller box than this. So hold that thought. Okay, this is pretty darn perfect. I've got room on the top, the bottom, and all of the sides to give some more cushioning. And in fact, you know what I'm going to use on this little bad boy? Ha ha. My secret weapon. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. Pool noodle baby. Pool noodle right there. Pool noodle right there. what I'm talking about. All right, look at that. That could drop from a two-story building and get there okay. And that, oh, I have one more thing to do, but you know what? You've seen me do the rug before. Same thing. It's going to get thrown in a bag out the door. I do have a table to ship, a table. I'm not sure what I was thinking. So I will do that on a separate video because I think that warrants its own special highlight. <laughs> Still don't know what I was thinking listing those. Anyway, I think I'm getting hot and delirious. So with that, go be profitable and make it fun and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so we can see you on the next one. All right. Bye, y'all.